I have a fart fetish. I want you to think about the saddest video you have watched. And no, I don't mean the one where you cry or anything. But the ones where you actually feel bad for the person who made it. Because it's that depressing. Granted, I don't expect most of you to remember any video like that because usually these videos are really hard to find, as you would expect. But what if I told you there is a man whose life is so sad and depressing that you can't help yourself but laugh at how pathetic he is. A man who has over 4,000 videos uploaded in the course of 7 years. A man who is probably the lowest life form you can find that is on YouTube. Meet Todd Andrew Ways. He's a 41 year old man from Columbus, Ohio. He, li he lives with his mom and from my knowledge is currently unemployed. He has been uploading videos on the site since 2006 and all of them are really the same. It's either Todd sitting in his dirty bedroom shirtless with two fans running in the background or think about either 1. his life, 2. his fetishes or 3. his haters or whatever the fuck he feels about ranting but that's the majority of his videos sprinkle that in with a bunch of weird dancing videos disgusting cooking videos and other random stuff that this man child comes up with he has apparently failed 60 jobs and his fetishes include stuff like sniffing dog shit but only if it belongs to a hot girl and being strangled by a wife's husband but only if she is watching and a dozen of other fetishes I can't even bear myself to say. And oh, yeah, there's one, yeah, yeah, there's one small detail I forgot to mention. He's a pedophile. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I mean, on my phone right now, I'm gonna say I'm attracted to kids. Like, a freaking. And that's only scratching the surface about this man. So, today I thought. I would do a whole biography about Todd and examine what exactly happened during the course of his life that led him to this extreme low point in his life. Todd Andrew Ways, or more known as Country Chef Beer Boy 92, or Cook Styles 36 or Beer Boy 60 or whatever you choose to call him, was born on September 21st, 1978, making him 41 years old at the time of this documentary being recorded. Before I actually get into Todd's story, it's important to note that most of the information I've gotten about Todd comes from Todd directly, from his multiple videos talking about his life, which he does almost every video. And since Todd is very clearly an alcoholic, make sure to take everything I say with a grain of salt. But besides that, he was born and raised in Ohio to a Jewish father and a Catholic Italian mother. He also has a sister who's two years younger than him. The relationship between Todd and his sister is odd to say the least. In every video where Todd can be seen with his sister, it's very apparent, to me at least, that Todd is really awkward around her. What do you feel like talking about? Well, Country Chef Beer Boy 92, or whatever you go by these days, um, I'm here because I'm being interviewed, so I'm expecting some questions from you. Okay, well... At one point when Todd was recording some weird interview with his sister, he decided to zoom into her tits and... yeah, you know what else. Even though they are related. And apparently, when they were both younger, she used to drop heavy objects on him while Todd was masturbating to that. So yeah, the relationship is really odd. And apparently, Todd and his sister had sex. But I haven't found any reliable proof of that since i never seen Todd say that in a video. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Todd also has a half-brother, which I don't really know much about. Only thing I really heard about him is that he's 10 years older than Todd and used to tease him when they were younger. Whilst growing up, Todd was very early diagnosed with CAPD, 
which stands for Central Auditory Processing Disorder. For those unfamiliar, it's basically an umbrella term for different disorders that affect the way the brain processes different sounds. When Todd was 7 months old, he almost died because he swallowed a teddy bear tag, but his dad saved him. Also around that time, cracked open his skull because, and I'm quoting, I was very excited about McDonald's, which I have no idea what he means by that. When Todd got into preschool, he was kicked out because of his apparent learning disability and the fact that he acted weird. So instead the people at the preschool, I assume, put him in a retarded, quote unquote, school. But his mom didn't like that and pulled him out of the school and instead decided to put him in a private Catholic school. It was there where Todd would first experience bullying, something that he would experience basically his whole life. It was there he was thrown in mud buried in the sand and a ton of other stuff by his classmate. He was bullied so hard that he actually started to like it and started getting aroused by his bullying. He would very commonly have shit thrown at him when at the bus. And in retaliation he would throw snowballs at him. Yeah, really not the best form of retaliation there is, but I guess that's the best he could think of. Because of that his bullying intensified as you would expect. At another point, Toto was almost set on fire by some kids, but apparently his dad saved him from them. And that's what I gathered from Todd's video explaining this, but really he was just mumbling all over the place about random stuff, so I'm not even 100% sure that's what he said. That was like in 2009 or 10 when I first thought about putting my face in a girl's ass or having poop, because poop turns me on. I mean, a girl's poop turns me on. I ain't gonna lie. But, to get back to the point, he was bullied until like the 5th grade. After 5th grade was when he finally got back to his learning disabled school. And he was also bullied there until around 9th grade. He was bullied so hard to the point that we developed a fetus for bullying. Somewhere around that time, I guess. So after he graduated 9th grade, he decided to go to a public school. But that would be a very short-lived option, because he soon after dropped out of public school because it was quote-unquote too hard. So instead of going there, his Jewish dad decided to put him in a Jewish school where he would spend the rest of his school life. In this new Jewish school, he surprisingly wasn't bullied, surprisingly enough, but he was alone and miserable during that time. During that time also, Todd also became interested in football and decided to start playing football. But he was terrible at football. But according to Todd, he tried very hard, so hard in fact, that his teammates and coaches would call him Forrest Gump because of how hard he was trying. But when it comes to his actual matches, he only played one scrimmage map then fucked off because of how hard it was and cause his dad didn't want him to play there. After Todd finally graduated from school, after being bullied for like 9 years straight non-stop, after everything he got through, he finally graduated. For most people that would be a new beginning, a chance to branch out. For Todd however, the first day he graduated, he blew all of his graduation money on food. Usually graduation money in America totaled to around $100 to $500 depending on what school you're going to. I have no idea how he spent almost all of it on food. Probably went to a ton of fancy restaurants. In 1998, when Todd was 20 years old, he was sent again by his father to a Jewish school in Israel. But that would prove to be very short lived as according to Todd he got quote unquote homesick a unspecified time later and got back home. When he got home he instead opted to go to college. How he got into college in the first place I have no idea but he still got into college. His classes were modified though and he once again had no friends and after just 4 years in college he dropped out in 2002. Where well, around that time he also started drinking. Something that would, in a basic sense, form who Todd is for the next two decades to come. After he dropped out, Todd realized that, hey, money is important, I need money. So he started working around different warehouses and doing stuff for them. But every time he would get a job, he would fail it almost as soon as he got in there. I have no idea what he does to fail these jobs or how he manages to do that. But nonetheless, he does fail them, and has to always find a new job. So he would basically find a new job, fail it, then apply to a new one, 
And that is what I want to call the thought cycle. Now repeat the thought cycle for like a dozen times. And what do you get? Bankruptcy is the answer. So Todd years later went bankrupt. In light of his bankruptcy and his endless search for a stable job, he decided to join the army in 2005. It's unclear what exactly he did or how he was treated there, but judging from his past history, I think you can imagine by yourself how it was there for him. So almost as soon as he got into the army, he got out thanks to his mom getting him out. At the time he was around 27 years old, and to have his mom come over and take him out just seems unbelievable to me. But this is not who we are talking about, so I'll let it slide, okay? After he got out of the army, he came right back to the top cycle. Getting jobs in the kitchen, warehouses, nursing homes, so on. Basically every low skill job you can possibly think of, Todd probably worked for, for some while, I guess. The thought cycle would continue until he failed over 60 jobs. Yes, you heard that right, 60 jobs. I have no idea how he managed to get any kind of jobs after failing the first 40 or 30 or so. Surely the managers in charge of hiring Todd must have seen his resume and realized how terrible of a candidate he is. How the hell does he get his jobs? Only explanation I can see is that the quality of the jobs keep on decreasing or that he works for some small cafe jobs on the wrong side of town owned by Mexican refugees that pay him illegally under the minimum wage. That is the only explanation I can see. The shocking part is that he fails to sustain these subs too. I am at this point convinced that Todd sexually harasses every single woman he's, that he sees, which is how he loses his jobs. And yeah, thanks to his job insecurities, he obviously didn't have the money to move out of his dad. But his dad was obviously not so pleased to have an almost 30 year old man still living with him, so it didn't take his dad long to kick him out. After he got kicked out, he tried moving in with his mom, but that didn't really last for too long and he was kicked out of there too. Out of option and without a purpose in life, he was about to move in into a homeless shelter. He set against it and instead choosing a much more luxurious lifestyle of living in different hotels and motels. At one point, he was even considering moving into a bunker. <laughs> but luckily for Todd, his mom laid pity on him and since then to today, he has been living with his mom. Then on the year 2006, the magical year, he would finally join YouTube. There's not much information on what exactly he used to upload back then, other than Todd's own words. The Todd Archive channel only started uploading in 2013, a full 7 years after he originally joined. And since Todd deletes his channel basically every time he gets slightly pissed off, it is hard to even, or even impossible, to find a video from him from that time. But according to Todd, his first ever video was a cat attacking a gun. Which according to Todd got 2000 views in 2 months. That might not sound much at first, but you have to consider that this was 2006 YouTube. So that might be more impressive, I guess. And after Todd's initial success, I would guess that afterwards he, he continued to upload thinking the same type of success was follow him up along. Which I don't think did. He might have had some sort of success in 2006 when it comes to YouTube. But outside of YouTube, Todd didn't have any type of success at all. The same year his car got repoed and around two years later he filed for bankruptcy. For the second time in his life. And something tells me it won't be his last time either. But afterwards he decided to go to the Seth Apprentice. But soon after he dropped out and decided to go back to school for whatever reason. And he started going to a community college but then dropped out in 2009. During his time back in college, he yet again had no friends, either in school or outside it. Neither has he ever had a girlfriend during that, but that goes without saying. After 2009 was when, in my opinion, Todd became into the Todd we know today. Ever since 2009, he has been slowly but surely declining, deteriorating in almost every way possible until he became what he is today. After he dropped out, however, he would go back to the Todd cycle yet again. Doing a lot of kitchen work, like dishwashing, but never cooking is what I noticed. Oh, and yeah, regarding that, Todd is a self-acclaimed master chef, and very boldly brags about how good he is when it comes to cooking. 
But really all he does when it comes to cooking is put his foot in the microwave or oven and that's really it. I never seen him do something from the scratch up. Or actually I have, but it looks something like this. I will talk about this more later, so stay along. In 2009 was also when he met one of his only friends. Crazy Russian 86 or Emil or the rules and they would both make a ton of videos together. Most of them consisting of Todd and Crazy Russian having a conversation I guess. Bruce 40, Reese 2336, Tiny Team Rose Shader, Tommy 10, Tommy. At times arguing with each other. What's going on? The rules back again. This guy talking over me he has no discipline he has no video editing skills he just bullshitting but he just like well the thing of the matter and of course drinking it is just as boring as it may sound but it may be my favorite type of thought video there is simply because of how domineering and easily pissed off crazy russian is when it comes to dealing with todd and how todd doesn't fight back at all open this for me oh sorry my nigga nigga Oh, you fucking need you. Sorry. It's an honor. Oh, it's rolling. Hold on. Here we go. Which really shows how submissive Todd is. Crazy Russian actually has a channel of himself, which is vastly different from Todd's channel. Dario Plus videos is ranting on his life, his own problems, politics, and whatever. To give you an example, he's someone who advocates killing anyone who doesn't work every single day of the year. People who don't work should go to jail or get killed. I don't know, I like these ideas, because you know what, if I would be a president, I would do exactly the same thing. Someone who thinks prostitutes are better than having a girlfriend. Because all I need for a woman is fucking pussy and entertainment. This is what women are for, okay? This is the utility of the woman, okay? And a plethora of other things which I, which I frankly don't have time to get into. But hey, if you're interested, I actually did an interview with Crazy Rush around a month or so ago. So check that out if you really want to. Also, it's important to note that Crazy Rush and Todd don't really talk to each other anymore. Just like an ex-boyfriend and girlfriend, you could say. Speaking of girls, Todd is dead afraid of them. <laughs> he has multiple times said that they can't handle speaking to them or even being served by them because he that makes him quote unquote depressed even though in almost every video of his he sits there talking about how much he wants to have sex with a woman kind of like a virgin and when it comes to virginity it's unclear if Todd is a virgin or not because at certain points he says that he's a virgin and never had sex with anyone in his life but at other times he says that he has been sucked up by some black woman a while back did I ever have no girlfriends? No, I never had a girlfriend. The closest I had to a girlfriend was in 2005, Sabrina, two months last. I assume she changes the story every time he's either drunk or sober, but I would guess Todd is not that afraid of the woman when it comes to the online space, considering how Todd spends his mother's money to pay cam girls online to degrade them whilst he masturbates. One of these girls he paid, named Leah, he paid to degrade him, but she just stole his money and never did anything to Todd. I can imagine how many other girls he tried paying to degrade him, but it was completely rejected. Todd actually has gone on a date, twice in his whole entire life. And one of these times was when a girl and him were in a restaurant. As soon as he arrived, she asked Todd for her money, which Todd, being the submissive person that he is, gave her. Thereafter, she did what a typical gold digger would do. Go to the bathroom, disappear. The second day I don't really know much about, other than that Todd put his hand under her shirt as soon as he met her. And that quite obviously ended things right there and there. In his life, he has only had around two girlfriends, both that didn't even last six months. One was that black girl that sucked him off, and the other one, I have no clue. It could be his sister for all I know of. Today, Todd still lives with his mom, and spends most of his time working, looking for work, drinking, or making like 10 plus videos every day of him drinking and whining about random stuff. His only real interests are fireworks, food, and malt liquor, which is what he adores. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, he also spends quite a bit of time watching TV shows like Sesame Street and All in the Family. Which really just shows what kind of mentality Todd has, doesn't it? In recent times, however, he has been complaining about not being able to afford medicine for I think his liver. 
I don't think this is a surprise to anyone considering Todd is a hardcore alcoholic that spends every day drinking 40 ounces. He in 2011 almost died because of alcohol poisoning, so yeah, you can just imagine what kind of damage his liver has. If I had to guess as to why he can't afford mentions, because Todd's priorities are very different to all of ours. His top priorities are probably 1. Alcohol, 2. Cam girls, and then comes food and everything else, unnecessary stuff basically. And that's not factoring in all the stuff he has been forced to pay, like his piles of college debt or unpaid hospital bills or dental debt. I've been talking a lot about what Todd likes and very little about what Todd dislikes. And the only thing I can find that he hates with a passion is being called gay. Especially being called gay with Crazy Russian 86. If he's provoked enough, he will have one of these hilarious freakout videos where he just goes on a swearing tirade and incoherent rants. Fucking cocksucker, fuck his pieces of fucking shit, motherfucker. You want to fuck with my fucking uh, internet fucking connection and fuck with my own fucking life? One such video is his notorious beating himself up video where he in the live stream gets so angry that he starts beating himself up. Is that good? Is that good enough for you, bitches? Huh? Uh huh? I thought so. Huh. I can just imagine all the other times he had had these type of freakouts during the years of 2006-2013 and how much priceless artwork was lost. Todd as well has recently started being proud of having the self-acclaimed title of being an incel because he thinks that's another word for loser. Which he is correct in, but I don't really see Todd as an incel, because Todd is only afraid of women. He does not hate them at all, which goes against everything the incel ideology stands for, completely. Todd also has quote unquote severely low IQ, stemming from his youth, which I mean, judging from his actions, that seems totally believable. What I really wonder is if there's anything Todd is good at. He claims to be good at cooking, but as you will see later on, that's a fucking lie. He has never had any jobs that require skill, and he even then constantly fails at them. Today, Todd is really doing nothing but working, then coming home and making like 10 videos of him drinking malt liquor, or dancing, or anything he desires. He keeps on losing his jobs, and the Todd cycle is on and healthy. I don't see any indication that he plans to change his ways anytime soon. So it seems we will be seeing videos from Todd for a long time. He'll just keep wasting money on cam girls, his beer, his alcoholic drinks, and support his fetishes by any means necessary, even if it takes money away from his mom. Speaking of fetishes... It's impossible to talk about the person Todd is without at least mentioning his notorious fetishes. Over the years he has been kicking himself mentally pretty bad about not having a girlfriend. Something that is pretty obvious as soon as you see any of his videos. This has led to him developing almost a dozen different fetishes that he supports in different ways. From my research I found out a few of them. But do keep in mind that it's almost impossible for me to document all of his fetishes. So I'll just provide you with a list of the fetishes I know of. If there's any I missed, feel free to comment them below. Oh, and yeah, some of these are fucking disgusting. So if you don't really want to hear them, feel free to skip to this point in the video. Being strangled while his wife watches. Part fetish. Degration slash humiliation fetish. Sniffing dog shit while the girl watches. Spit fetish. Erotic asphyxiation. Food fetish. Golden sour. Brown sour. Tickling fetish. Torture fetish. Being trampled fetish. Mole fetish. Throwing up fetish. Mouth fetish. That's the fetishes I found out after watching like a few videos of, him, of his. One of his more prevalent fetishes, probably his fart fetish. He has made to this date 46 videos talking about it. And it's one of his more well-known fetishes. 
he explains that one of the main reasons that he is so obsessed over farts is because of the fact that hot girls fart and that they are quote unquote healthy. So that must mean that farts are healthy, to which is why he likes them. Another one of his more well known fetishes is his humiliation or degradation fetish, whatever you choose to call it. Todd claims he has the fetish thanks to his long history with bullying. And he has been bullied so hard and so severely that he developed a love for it. Except if you call him gay of course. He very commonly pays scam whores online to degrade him and call him names in exchange for money. And not only cam whores but he also tried paying normal girls to degrade him. But that rarely ever works out. Except when they steal the money and run away from Todd. He at times even tries justifying his drinking habits by claiming he drinks to be humiliated by the girls. I can't tell if there's some truth to that or not. His obsession with attractive women goes further than that. He has as well dreams about being tortured by them. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff related to his fetishes are to do with women. I can just imagine how many times you must have masturbated to develop this many fetishes. Quick question, would any of you sleep on Todd's bed for a night? For like, I don't know, 500 bucks. I can just imagine the cesspool of STDs that live in the area surrounding his bed. Todd apparently is also believed that if you smell a woman's ass, you will live longer. Maybe Todd's trying to make up for the lost life he spent drinking, I don't know. Another thing I've noticed is how he does all of the fetishes by himself, of course. He once paid some supermodels to put blood pressure cuffs on him and pumped it to... 200 I presume? It turned them on of course. I can tell that that moment was probably one of the only moments he has ever been happy. Or at least not sad. Even a man like Todd has his limits apparently. Todd hates electricity and hates electricity fetish and anything to do with that. Not as much as he hates being called gay though. That's really all there is to say about his fetishes as there isn't too much to even say about them. They are fetishes. But I think it's at least important to mention them when we are talking about a man like Todd. But let's move on to the juicy part. As mentioned before, Todd has been on YouTube in some capacity since 2006. Under these 13 years, he has been under 50 different names. You can actually find all his names in a Google document linked in the description with such jabs as 40 ounce virgin, Country Beer Sugar 6, the only beer dude 42, and of course, Toddy Foddy TV. It's on these channels where Todd uploads his videos, which is a topic I think we haven't talked about much, so let's talk about it. Most of the videos you find on Todd's channel are basically just the same one thing, stretched into 4,000 different videos. Him sitting in his dirty ass bedroom, talking about random stuff for around 2 minutes, then staring around and being completely silent for the other 8 minutes until he realizes he is recording and turns the camera off. Sometimes this wonderful experience is accompanied with music, if it isn't taken down to this. Other times Todd just straight up leaves after the first 2 minutes and you just see nothing but this wonderful room for the next 8 minutes. I'm judging this based off the uploads on Todd's archive channel, so it's not entirely accurate of Todd but it's close enough. But anyways, these types of videos are the most common type you'll find on his channel. But it isn't the only type of videos you find. Another type of Todd videos you might find on his channel is video involving him dancing to random stuff. He's obviously very inexperienced and his quote unquote dancing involves him just slightly moving his arms up and down. At the time he dances sitting down which really just shows Todd's raw talent in the art of dancing. Todd has done like 50 videos in the past 6 years of him dancing. So they are really not that common as you would expect. Another but a very important type of Todd video you'd find is videos of him cooking or at least trying to cook. Todd thinks very highly of himself when it comes to cooking. He really does think he's some kind of master chef and praises himself as being a good cook. But as you can probably figure out from these photos I'm showing you, he is quite possibly the opposite. He claimed to have worked as a chef before, somewhere before 
eventually getting fired. And after watching a bunch of Todd's cooking videos, it's pretty clear that he can't make anything from scratch. His so-called cooking videos all consist of him putting stuff in a microwave, or lazily putting together a sandwich that in the end looks disgusting. Now, I'm not claiming to be some sort of master chef, unlike Todd, but every time I look at the food Todd makes, all I can picture is how easy it is to make something that looks better than that. And if that is the impression left by people, after watching your cooking videos, then you're obviously doing something seriously wrong. He was asked before to make something from scratch. But that seems to either ignore or just flat out refuse to do so, which doesn't really help his case. Neither does cooking shirtless or using your camera to help you cook. Another thing of note is how his equipment looks rusted as hell. It really seems like they were bought from around the 1990s, and he ha hasn't bothered to upgrade them ever since. That surprisingly isn't even the most disgusting part of his cooking videos. The most disgusting part of them is when he randomly stops cooking to discuss hot girls or god forbid his fetishes. Uh, webcam Filipino chick, uh, she was real hot, she had moles like right up in here and under her tits, it was so fucking hot. And but she didn't like make eye contact like I liked and like I wanted and told her to stick her tongue out at me while I was drinking that. It's cook time, lunch time for me. However, the best type of Todd videos you may find of, on this channel are the ones where he lashes out on his haters, or just anything related to his haters. In these type of videos, you can see him scream incoherently or just beating himself up in rage because someone in the comments called him gay. Those by far are the best source of entertainment you may find on this channel. If there are any Todd videos I would suggest you watch, then I would suggest you watch the one where he beats himself up. We need more videos like that. Another very common but old type of videos you'll find on Todd's channel is videos where he's hanging out with one of his only friends, Crazy Russian 86. Videos with them just really consist of Crazy Russian and Todd drinking and Crazy Russian bossing Todd around. And it really just feels like watching an abusive relationship. Only difference is that Todd enjoys it. When it comes to Todd drinking, I think it's safe to assume that Todd is a drunk in the vast majority of his videos. In some it's more obvious than others, but it's pretty clear that he's at least sort of drunk. You find it hard to find videos where he's absolutely blackout drunk. Probably because he wouldn't even be able to set up a camera in that state. The last type of Todd videos I would like to talk about is the one where Todd is trying to run for president. And I mean, hey, if you have as much free time as Todd, might as well try, why not? The only difference is that Todd has no clue what he's talking about, and every time he makes a presidential video, he just throws these big political phrases at you to hopefully sound smart, I guess. Is it jeopardy and risk? But due to hatred, due to terrorist acts, due to warfare, due to chaos, due to the national deficit, our budget, us owing a lot of money to other countries. This video is just leaving more confused in the end than at the start. At least he got his look spot on though. Just look at that. But hey, every four years when there's election season in America, you can count on our main man Todd making a presidential video. And at least you will know what political phrases are hip and trendy at that moment. Our future president also has a deep hatred for Trump as well. Or does he? He made some videos where he says Trump is an amazing candidate. But I assume he was at the other spectrum of drunk than at the one he's usually at. So if you want a president that has no idea what he's doing, nor what he believes in, then vote for Todd Weiss. And he needs your votes, since he's too socially anxious to go campaigning. And that's really all the major videos you'll find on this channel, with other random videos mixed between that. You may find that Todd's channel is pathetic or just sad to watch, but I think that you're close-minded. This type of video formula has the potential to become the new mainstream. All I am saying is when PewDiePie starts drinking malt liquor naked in his bedroom, remember what I just said. But in all seriousness, the only entertainment I found from watching Todd's videos is when researching for his documentary are the ones where he just lashes out on his haters or his comment section. Everything else is just either boring or sad or funny or a mix of that or very weird kind of way. Can't imagine that there is a single serious fan out there 
than actually no joke and choice watching his videos. Since 2013, he has made around 4000 videos. If my calculations are, are correct, he has made around 10,000 different videos since 2006. 10,000! In comparison, PewDiePie has only uploaded 4000 videos. This should give you some ideas. This video would not be complete without me talking about this, so let's get into it. In around summer of 2019, a phone recording between Todd and I guess one of his haters emerged online. It is Todd very clearly and proudly admitting the fact that he finds children sexy. It's very clear that he knows that it's not the right thing to say, and that he would probably get in trouble for saying so. But he says anyway. His exact words were... I'm I think seven, or I think seven, eight to nine to ten year, ten year olds are attractive. I'm pet. I'm gonna, admit, I'm gonna say, I mean, on my phone right now, I'm gonna say I'm attracted to kids, like a preteen. A ten year old is, is is sexy. I'm gonna. I'll just straight up admit a 10 year old's pretty right now. After this phone call was leaked, Todd went into full damage control mode, knowing that he just fucked up majorly. He tried explaining that he was lying. I lied. <clears throat> I lied. I'm really not. I just was really, really, really pissed off. Anger that he didn't know what he was saying, when he very clearly did know. I, I was just pissed off and I said what I said because people for so long have been calling me gay, so... To try defending himself. He then claimed he said what he said because he was being called gay and wanted to refute that in the worst possible way imaginable. But yeah, I don't believe anything he's saying. He's more than certainly a pedophile, judging how he had albums of his sister when she was younger, which he would use to masturbate, which he then lost. He now has basically completely destroyed the little amount of respect he had among the small group of people that actually did watch him. And every time anyone searches his name on YouTube or Google, Videos of him admitting he's a pedophile come up as the first result. Try it yourself. Best or maybe the worst thing from this whole situation is how as Todd has never even apologized for saying any of these words. It's very clear to me that he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong or that it's other people at fault and not him. Which I think perfectly summarizes the type of person Todd is. If you would look at any comment section of a Todd video, you would find yourself amused at how many people actually watch this guy. He's pretty popular, I would say. And the only thing you would be seeing upon looking at this comment section is people writing paragraphs on why Todd sucks or just people generally hating on Todd. For years, he had the same group of people that have been just doing the same thing over and over again for years now. He loves the attention these people are giving him. An example of people like that are individual known as Soda Pop, Watch O'Hare, or Rifle Shooter Guy. These are the type of people you can almost see in every Todd video responding to literally everyone. But by far the person I've seen dedicate the most time to Todd is a man that goes by the Wise Man Committee. He has done over 1000 videos of him just making fun of Todd or other alcoholics. He has a video with Todd in it with over 1 million views somehow. I have no idea how. Fun fact, Todd is actually subscribed to his own archive channel. Just a bit of trivia for you. And another fun fact, they've messed with his Facebook so much that Todd has actually changed his name on Facebook, thinking it'll stop them. It, it didn't, of course. However, it's important to differentiate these people from actual normal people. They try giving advice to Todd. It's pointless. Todd doesn't listen to them, don't get me wrong. In his mind, it's all other people's fault and never his own fault. He, in fact, thinks that all the people that comment on his videos are his quote-unquote fans.
Some might ask, why? Why did I make this almost 40 minute documentary talking about the slow life? The lowest life there is to find on the internet, probably. Why I decided to waste my time making this gigantic video? The answer is that I'm genuinely intrigued by Todd and his story. A story of how someone has been given a bad hand and played it in the worst possible way you could possibly play it. And I also think there's an important lesson to be learned from looking at Todd. And something I could say satisfactory is that no matter how hard your life currently is, or in what position you are in right now in society, there's always someone that has it worse off. Not only that, but this tale is also a cautionary one as well. As if you just start ignoring your problems, you can expect them to become worse and worse and worse as time goes on. As seen with Todd, just look at these two pictures. Now, I don't really know a good way to really end this documentary. I could give Todd some actual advice on how he could improve on his life. But the reality is that plenty of people have already tried doing that. And Todd does not give a fuck about what they are saying. So there is really no point. Todd is really just on you to get the attention he so so craves. And for no other reason other than that. At least in my observations. In fact I'm willing to bet that Todd is probably watching this very video right now. Because he watches any video that relates to him. And if you are indeed watching this Todd. And I, you, and I know you probably are. All I want to say is, how are ya? Remember that interview offer I've offered you a couple of months ago? It's still on the table. So if ever since your mind just hit me up.